in terms of my advice, take it all with a grain of salt because you know, the fog, the, the future is as foggy for me as, as others. Uh, but, you know, for generally speaking, you know, where anytime you have a crisis, that's also an opportunity. You know, a lot of the world has been thrown up into the air over the last several months. And uh, the folks listening, all of us have some agency in determining how things fall back down. And so as stressful as this is, as hard as this is, this is a time where the world, it will be easier to change things than, than in normal times. Uh, so I think that's the best mindset to take on it because as negative as it is and as many stressors as there are in the broader world right now, to have this view that you know, there is a, there's a window of opportunity right now to really do some interesting innovation, to try some experiments, to fail forward uh, that can make, make some really good things happen post COVID. But there's other layers uh, that COVID showed the necessity of how do you give people high quality synchronous instruction, ideally in a very accessible way. Because we saw as soon as the schools closed, some kids were able to get really good interactive video conferencing with their teachers, others were not. The other big question is, what does the future of certification and credentialing look like, especially with COVID where letter grades were difficult to administer, standardized tests were difficult to administer, is there a new way of doing things? So in terms of advice for folks thinking through distance learning, you know, what's interesting is, well, I'll, I'll say it, um, and then I'll tell you what's interesting about it. It's all about engagement right now. You know, we've been telling teachers uh, that, you know, there's a lot of pressure to cover standards, to move test scores, to do all this stuff. But this is a year that if you don't engage students, they're going to be lost. And you know, you're especially limited because it's all over, you know, the video, you can use Khan Academy for asynchronous learning, but you're going to use video conference for synchronous learning. You got to pull them out of the screen. You got to make it interactive. You got to ask them questions, put them into breakouts, be creative on the use of time. You don't have to do 60 minutes with 30 kids. You could do 10, six minutes. Uh, you could do six, 10 minute periods with five kids. Uh, you could even do one-on-one, -on -one, two minutes at a time with kids. I mean, that might be a little bit too much, but you can really start to, to mix things around so it's super interactive. Now, the thing that's interesting is everything I just said, that, you know, a lecture on video conference might as well be a video, that you need to make it interactive. You have to have humans interacting with each other. That's also true of the physical classroom setting. So if there is a silver lining is that finally, I see more energy than ever. People say, well, how do I really engage kids? <laughs> it's like, it's, Because, yeah. you know, when you're in a physical room, you can be physically there, but not mentally there. And I think, you know, the video conference modality has made people ask that question even more. It's like, what can technology and distance learning do well? And then that isn't to kind of somehow replace the college, but once again, it's to unlock the college. Like think about how, you know, a, a college campus like a Berkeley or Stanford, so many interesting people who want to do so many interesting things and interact with each other. But sometimes they have to sit in these 300 person lecture halls and, you know, kind of that's a waste. <laughs> that, that could should be happening at students on time and pace. And that if you're going to get 300 people together, make them interact with each other. Let them form memories together that they're never going to forget. And, 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 and all the ingredients are there. And so this can unlock that. A bunch. I mean, I'm a big fan of habits. And some of the habits I'll tell you are, are pre-COVID, but that I think they've proven to be very valuable during COVID. I meditate every morning, half an hour. I take cold showers that one's a little more controversial but it, there's actually good research studies that it, it improves your mood it gets you invigorated no caffeine necessary C cold shower is like a reboot on your psyche um but you know follow a doctor's advice or whatever i don't want people to get pneumonia and things um you know i, I do my daily workout I, I always start the morning making my bed it gives me that win that like i did one thing today's going to be productive um, and then you know what i try to do in the covid specific and all of those habits have helped, but especially when, you know, there, you, you could potentially have eight hours of meetings, which are in theory all on video conference, not good for anybody. So I've actually been like, look, I'm here, I'm engaged, but I need to turn the screen off. I'm going to go for a walk. I have my phone with me. I can still look at your slides. And by the way, should they really be, should you really be presenting slides? How about you give it as a pre-read <laughs> and then we can talk about whatever questions you have as opposed to a show and tell. Uh, but I think that, you know, making, once again, meetings interactive. So don't just present to me. I can read ahead of time. And also, look, I'm going to have to turn the screen off. I'm going to go for a walk, get my steps in, get some fresh air. Those have been lifesavers for me. And, you know, that, so for me, it's actually been reasonably okay. And, you know, it's nice that my kids are in the other room. I see them at lunch. And so I've been doing okay. But, you know, a lot of my colleagues who are just on a video conference for eight hours a day, they're, they're losing it. And I'm like, turn it off and go for a walk. They're like, can I do that? I was like, 
everyone wants to do that. Do it. <laughs> so, so, so those are my hacks. You cannot over communicate, especially once your organization is growing. Uh, you know, you, you think you said it three times, it turns out you need to say it seven times. Or <laughs> folks to really get aligned. When you're a two third, three person organization, you get away with a lot. But once you get 30, 40, 100, 200 people, you have to really get alignment. Because if you don't invest in that alignment, you're going to have a lot of people kind of pulling in different directions, which isn't good for anybody. So those are my, my, my two big ones.